So come check out me, Spencer Hutchinson versus Chadwick C. Play at Gallery Bar, Thursday, May 1st from 8 to 11 p.m. All right. So we're here in Hawaii talking about Rescue and Destroy. Um, so when did you first hear about Rescue and Destroy and what, what is your thoughts on it? I heard about Rescue and Destroy, uh, gee, uh, probably about six months ago, I think. Yeah, six or seven months ago. Um, and it was a very compelling concept. You know, it really, um, you know, they say that you know, your art shouldn't be too precious. And so this is a great way for artists to get exposure and to also maintain a sort of a zen-like distance between yourself and the product that you create. So I think it's a really great concept. And I'm very excited to be uh, able to participate. Avant-garde, experimental, and of the uh, genre drum and bass, um, which uh, used to be called IDM, um, a very hateful acronym. I spent a great deal of time in the sound department at the School of the Art Institute, um, making electronic music, which is, was, you know, um, we can debate about the artistic merits of electronic music later. True art comes from that place where language breaks down. Time to get into ambient music. Um, I always found it to be too easy. You know, which yeah, of course yeah. it's not. Like, or anybody knows anyone who wants to do a little collaboration with some live instrumentation and some soundscapes and uh, interesting synthesized textures, I might be into it. I got a guy for you. Okay, that's I've hit a wall with um, production personally. I kind of got bored with making music and uh, began exploring intersections between music and architecture. And I stumbled upon the the geometric theory of tonality um, pioneered by Dmitry Tomoshko, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He's a musicologist at, at Princeton. And he has discovered these underlying geometrical um, proofs, essentially, that underlie every aspect of music, of tonal music, that we find appealing. I began exploring, exploring the work of that of that individual, and last year I, I did my first site-specific sound installation using um, what I had learned from Il Maestro Dimitri um, and applied it to the architectural layout of the Garfield Park Fieldhouse. An architectonic musical aspect to it, or like virtual reality, events of virtual reality, and more hopefully going to be revisiting that structure uh, this year um, for the second installment, which will include uh, live musicians, nice. uh, members of the, the uh, Suzuki Orf strings cool. and so A lot of my found object paintings um, I don't feel have, have really been uh, given the audience that, that uh, would appreciate them so to speak. So mainly my main ambitions, I just want more people to see my work and to get to know who I am as an artist and uh, what I'm doing and, and where I'm going, you know, I mean, for me, as long as I'm able to make enough money to continue to make more art, for sure. you know, and to continue my more esoteric interests, you <laughs> know, intersections between music and architecture. The Appalachian foothills in that area is Enigma's 1990 AD when it's foggy outside, not raining, but just when it's foggy, I'm telling you, it is some haunting, haunting, it's some good stuff, it's some good stuff, it's perfectly matched. The landscape itself can become something like a soundscape. By John Cage stating that every object has its own sound and all we need to do is pass over that object. So the idea that, you know, every everything <laughs> on the earth even in, even inanimate objects have their own kind of selfhood, this kind of existential idea um, that every object is endowed with, a, with its own sort of selfhood and its own sort of identity, and how you can reclaim these objects from the streets um, or wherever you find them and repurpose them to 
bring out their essence. Uh, being an artist work, who works with sound, addressing the visual plane, um, these, act, these, these objects, and bringing them to the attention of the viewer in a way that the viewer might not necessarily take to them if they were to see them in every day. So the sort of taking taking impoverished things and endowing them with privilege. You know, all of his characters were two-dimensional, so they were either flat or they were facing profile like this. And I never criticized him on his drawing because he he did have he did possess a certain degree of what you could call what one might call genius with drawing. Um, and he criticized my drawings. He criticized my characters for looking too much like conventional comic books. Hmm. And he said, look, you know, and we're, we're eight years old. <laughs> he says, look, are, 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 are we going to be DC Comics? Are we going to be Marvel Comics? Or are we going to be our own thing? Yeah, cool. You know? best way to drive that, and this is eight years old, yeah, yeah. the best way to drive that home. I'm glad you added that in, because that makes a whole difference. It's, yeah. It makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. And he really, yeah. that really made me think. And um, after a lot of thinking about it, I decided that I would keep my own separate drawing practice, where I drew what I wanted, and then for the comic books, we would tow the party line. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, do it all original. And so I've always, in all of my creative ventures, in all of my collaborative efforts, I've always kept something for myself that, that I don't necessarily tell anybody about. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, my yeah, own yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you want to ask, but you keep it to yourself, well, I get it. But that's what you see. But that's what the real art is. And that's what yeah. we're actually talking about. We're talking True. about the stuff that people didn't actually see. When you have that, when you're able to grasp that mm -hmm. and apply it to your life, you can take the thing, if you're an artist, you can take the things that you do and you can reveal them at the right time. Like this interview right now. Yeah. I might not have felt comfortable doing an interview like this two years ago or three years ago. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's the right time. So it's all about taking, you know, doing those things that you've been working on that nobody knows about and then bring them in at the right time. Yeah, exactly. I am simply a common slob here. <laughs> you know, from my Your history, high points. Just yeah. selling work. Selling work, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's it. That's the best I've seen. Selling work. Yeah. That's been the most that I can say, you know. Yeah. yeah. I haven't played my music out at a lot of places. Um, the opportunity just hasn't been there. Um, and so for me, you know, being a sound artist, the one sound that every artist can relate to is the sound of money. <laughs> you know, you, you see, like, they, they did a thing there. Yeah, yeah. It was a joke. Yeah. Um, Thierry and Francoise, you know, was a real treat. That was a real champ. Yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll a, say that. Yeah, that's we'll what I was looking that. for. That's that's yeah. yeah, that's what it said. Nice. Yeah. And taking the co-prosperity sphere, school, class. No prosperity. Oh, you took that class? I took the class. Oh, yeah. I was going to. It just, it just it didn't good. work out for me at the time. I so wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. I love yeah. everybody there. Yeah, yeah. Everything everybody's doing. Yeah. Oh, I should have taken that class. Yeah. It's yeah. Spencer Hutchinson versus Chadwick C. Play at Gallery Bar, a Thursday, May 1st. Um, what time is that at? 8 to 11. 8 to 11. That's 8 to 11. Okay. So check it out. ratios that could be played musically, and I played back the sound of those ratios, those harmonic ratios, inside the atrium of the building. Cool. Well, it's good we're standing outside then. <laughs> I actually recently sold the original uh, drawing to a friend in Indianapolis, Indianapolis. Uh, but I still have uh, two, the other two drawings from this project.